Hello and a very warm welcome to another Parallel Systems Technology broadcast. Today we are going to explore the super cool new platform from Cadence, ORCAD X. The new ORCAD X platform has been designed from the ground up and Parallel Systems has been involved since the beginning of the development. Joining me today is John Carney from Cadence. Welcome, John. Now, John probably knows more about ORCAD X than any other person on the planet. So I asked John to share with us the top 10 things you can do with the new ORCAD X platform. John, thanks ever so much for joining us. Would you like to quickly introduce yourself and we can get started? Sure, yeah, I've been here at Cadence for over 20 years and my key passion and focus is ease of use and really giving the customers what they want to have in a tool, not just delivering functionality, but functionality you can actually use. Excellent, okay, well, the first one on the list is Circuit Replicate. John, tell us all about it. What have you got for us, friend? So Circuit Replicate allows you to take a place and rotted circuit that you've used in a previous design or in a situation where you have the same circuit over and over and over again in the same design. So you launch the Circuit Replicate command. You type in the name of the circuit that you want to use because you're going to reference it later on. And then you can just window select the circuitry that you want to repeat over and over again. So you, now you've created that module. Then you can go to supply, you can go to apply, type in the name of the circuit that you just created, or this could be something that you've created in a library or some other previous design. And then you can just window select all the other circuits in the design or all the unplaced components. And then now the tool is just going to queue those things up for placement and you can place them one after the other into your design until it's placed all of those circuits in the design. Once those yeah. things are in there, those things can be moved around like a group and treated like one individual component and moved around if you want. So you can say, I want to move this whole circuit now up here and move it around or something like that. Wow, that's excellent. Really like it. Okay, the next one on the list is via arrays. So John, tell us what can we expect from the new platform for via arrays? So what we'll give you as a user is a whole array of different types of via arrays that you can add to the tool. So you can add them to a tra trace or a shape. You can specify how many you want. Do you want them to be staggered? You can do it on a trace. You can do centered, surrounding, in between. And then you have your arrays, radial, across the board, across a window, or across a shape. And then with the use model, you can punch in your parameters pick your via you want to have, and then you just go to town and you select the object that you want to add the vias on. So you can select this trace and you can pick which side of the trace you want the vias on. So for example, I want the traces on the vias on that side of the trace. And then if we were to go to array and I could then put in the parameters here and then pick the shape. In, in this one on the list of the top 10 is the new user interface. So uh, go ahead. We basically approached the user interface, you know, we took the Allegro database, which was known for being, you know, one of the most robust and most stable and highest capacity editors in the world. And then we looked at all the other good UIs that exist and we redesigned every functionality that existed with this brand new user interface. So like most Microsoft applications, we have like a three panel system where over on the left-hand side, you have your visibility controls, your navigation controls, you have your, your main canvas in the middle, and then you have your properties panel over here on the right-hand side. I'm out there today. So for example, if you have your design level selected, you have your top level design attributes. If you select a component, you'll get your component attributes. If you were to zoom in and select a net, you're gonna get your net level attributes. And then of course, any anything over here that's a blue hyperlink you can navigate to that and then that's going to populate the, the the last window which is this search panel which is also then again another navigation window that navigates to the design canvas so anybody coming into this that hasn't used orcad before should be able to quickly find their way around the tool to figure out what do i need to do to get my job done right mm -hmm. Um, and then, of course, for all the command editing windows, then you have your command toolbar here. So anything that needs to operate on the canvas is on this floating toolbar here. Wow, cool. Yeah, that's, that's really, 
really nice yeah. so instead of being hidden <clears throat> hidden deep down in in the load of menus it's, yeah and then any most of these commands instead of having to go off and read a user's manual or things like that we've built as much of the control and documentation we kind of call it self-documenting anything that's in the command that we think a user is going to need to know or understand how to use a tool we just build it into the ui so that as you're toggling the ui for example you know exactly what each one of these commands and controls is going to do mm -hmm. okay awesome yeah. yeah it looks a lot more uh, it looks simplified it looks like very like yeah is there a way to get rid of all of your um your your menus and open up the uh, the real estate for the for the actual canvas itself? Absolutely, yeah. So I'm only running on one monitor right now, but if, if you have you can you can yeah, minimize yeah. all those tabs and then they'll kind of become a you know a dynamic shootout when you hover over them. Oh wow! Or cool. if you if you'd like, you can you can grab these things and put them on a completely separate monitor outside of the design outside Brilliant. of the main window entirely if you'd like. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, really yeah. like it. And then, of course, oh. it'll remember where you put everything. So if you if you set everything up the way you like it and then shut it down and come back the next day, it'll it'll remember all that stuff for you. Yeah, it certainly looks looks a lot cleaner. Um, it looks a lot more intuitive. Uh, it looks like there's um there's been some real thought behind what should go where. Yeah, so very much appreciate. Yeah, most of what we do, like in the development effort is we would we would develop an application or feature, then we'd work with people like yourself or other customers or end users. And we basically just give them to them without any training or documentation and ask them, could you figure out how to use what you needed to do? Could you do it? Could you lay out a design with this? And then any chance people, anytime people came back and said that nah, I wasn't quite intuitive, I couldn't quite figure it out. We would then circle back to R and D just changing the use model and changing the use model until we got it right. Yeah. It looked good. Okay. Uh, the next one in the top 10 is, design review and markup what have you done here john what, what have we got so just like another command in the toolbar anybody at any point in time when you're working on the design you can access the design review and markup command which brings up just yet another command panel over here and same thing with every ui we're not we're trying to keep you know keep this area clean from pop-up windows and stuff like that and so what you can do here is you could, let's say, zoom into an area of the board and say you want to add a new comment. And I could say, uh, move this connector. And then you have some annotation capabilities. So you could, for example, draw a square around a connector and then submit that. So now I have one markup comment in the design. Mm -hmm. you, you could go somewhere else, maybe change, maybe change the display a little bit. Maybe I want to turn on all the shapes for this example hit a new comment uh who went to go over here turn my shapes back on i'm gonna now i'm gonna draw an arrow and draw an arrow from there and say something like add more vias submit that and so what i've done is i basically just made a kind of a running list of comments or markups that need mm -hmm. to be addressed in the design and kind of who owns them and who needs to do what with them. And then these get saved with the design database. And then anybody else who comes in to the design and works with the design, they could they could come into the design. They may be working on here. They would open up the review and comments panel and they'd say, oh, there's some stuff I need to work on. Well, mm -hmm. if they click on the comment here, it's going to take them to that particular comment and set the display based upon what was set up. For example, if they click on here, it's going to take them back to that and turn back on the shapes or whatever objects were visible when the comment was made. Or they can go back to this comment and they can switch back and forth. And then they could <clears throat> use the command, move the connector, and then they could say at Jay Carney. OK, I moved it. And then they could submit that. And then so now you have like a running comment thread. on a particular comment and mm -hmm. anybody can then go in and comment on that look at those comments and then whoever whoever owns it can say i'm going to resolve that comment and now that's resolved so it still stays in the database so you can see who made what comments and when and who fixed it and how they fixed it and if this really doesn't look fixed you could like reopen it and go back in and completely revisit it Today, this is working with the design database. Um, our very near-term plans is to get this working with the OrcadX cloud capabilities. 
-hmm. so that you could actually assign cloud ownership to these people in these activities and share this online back and forth with other people. No, that's very cool. That's, that's going to be super useful um, as opposed to just passing things around on email and notes and not being attached to the database and who did what and when. Yeah, no, I really like right. it. Okay, the next in the top 10 is the fast 3D engine. John, the 3D engine was already pretty fast. You must have put some high octane fuel in there to get this, this going any faster than it already does. I'm very interested to see um, what you've done here. We've certainly did. So we basically made it so when you first switch to 3D for any design database, it may come up in one or two seconds. And then once you get it open, you can toggle back and forth in between 2D and 3D as quickly as you can hit the button. Okay. And then once cool. you're in 3D, you notice all the command controls stay the same as in 2D. So it's it's same UI as everything else. For example, if you select a component, you get the component properties over here. You have the visibility panel over here where you can navigate your nets. And if you were to zoom in a little bit, you can see it's it's either going to show you the net from the top down or from the bottom up, depending on where the predominant routing layer is at. If you want to turn or control what you're looking at in 3D, you can say, show me the place bound. Don't show me the place bound. Show me my 3D model, not my 3D model. The visibility of all the layers is controlled over here. And you can also control the visibility of, you know, maybe you want to see your mechanicals as a solid or as a transparent, or you don't want to see your mechanical models at all. And okay. you can do that on an individual component basis. And if you need to bring in some new mechanical model for another mechanical enclosure, you can just hit this plus sign right here, bring in another mechanical model, and then orientate that and align that in 3D. Any other component, you can select and you can move those things around in 3D there. And then once you're done with 3D, you can just go right back to uh, 2D and then continue working with the design. So, for example, if you go into 2D and if you were to grab a, a component and let's say move that guy right out there, mm -hmm. right back into 3D, it's instant, right? It's the same right. database. It's not a derived view mm -hmm. of the database. It's the database. So another way to think about it is this database here is always in 3D. It doesn't have to be rendered. It's just always there, which is one of the right. ways we did this performance increase. That's cool. Yeah. Are you going to show the, we got one of the topics is flex coming up. Are you going to show the 3D flex and bending in, in that segment or do you, want to, do you want to hit on it now? Sure. Yeah. So from a flex perspective, what we've done is for flex, you generally have to do a couple of different things. You, you need to set up your zones and you need to set up your bends. Right. Mm -hmm. a, a zone is basically basically saying that this area of the board is one flex region. This area of the board is a different flex region. So we have these abilities to just draw in your zones using a, some sort of polygon. And then those zones are going to match to an area of the stack up. And then same thing with the bends. The bends, for example, is basically telling you where there is a bend line like this one right here. Mm -hmm. And this is another example of one of the cool UI things we did where it's showing you like a quick help. If there's something that we felt like the user needs just a little point in the right direction, we're just going to give you a little informative window up here telling oh, you what you need to do. So like if mm -hmm. I were to click here to start a bend line, right, it's telling me, okay, now I'm going to draw a bend line there and then and then you're finished. Once you Once you get all the flex zones and everything put into place, you can look at them anytime you click on the design outline it's going to tell you how many zones and bends you have so you got seven okay. different zones mm -hmm. you can navigate around through those zones to see i got one here i got one there i got one there or if you want to navigate and look at the bends the bend lines each have all their own particular attributes on it basically explaining where it starts where it ends the radius basically how it's going to bend and fold Mm -hmm. in place all this stuff can also come from your mechanical designer and typically it does right typically the mechanical no, right. designer would define this and then you would import that in using an idx import or an mcat x type of import to bring that in from whatever mechanical tool you're doing and then once you once you get that into 3d all those bend lines are available down here so each each bend line you can you can fold or bend up the thing individually if you want to fold and bend one of them or you can fold and bend all of them 
together to see what your design is going to look like in the folded state or the unfolded state. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, very useful. Yeah, love it. And it's super fast. It's smooth. Yeah, brilliant. Yep. Okay, so the next one on the list is the 3D DRC. Very interested to see what you've got here for us, John. Sure. So if you recall, as I just said, the, the, the three-dimensional view of the database is always available. So that allows you to get 3D DRCs in 2D and in 3D, whichever view you want to be working on. So for example, shown here, I'm showing this design in, three, in 2D. And using this DRC browser over there, you can see that you already have a couple 3D DRCs in the design. So you can, you can navigate or kind of descend into this pie chart to go into certain types of DRCs that you want to navigate. So I'm going to navigate these 3D DRCs and you can see that you've got quite a few of them going on in the design, right? And that is set up inside of the constraint manager where you can set up 3D spacing DRCs for component to component, component to board, component to flex, etc. So you have a lot of really good robust controls for how you set these 3D DRCs up. And then that's a, a live DRC check. So if I were to, for example, turn on all the DRCs and then come in here and move this component over a little bit, I immediately got another 3D DRC. So it's telling me that I've hit the enclosure, even though I'm not even looking at the enclosure. Mm -hmm. Whereas right. if you were to, to switch over to, to 3D, you can immediately see why you have these 3D DRCs because those LEDs are nowhere near mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, fitting through those holes. And then of course you mm -hmm. can just do the edit and undo. Let me get rid of that. You can do the edit and undo and it's just gonna pop that LED back into the original place. Or you can select your LEDs and start moving around by the coordinates here to put them exactly where you want them to be in 3D space or 2D space. So that should be a huge time saver we think because oh, most yeah. people, you know, your, your 3D DRCs are gonna be based upon the mechanical enclosure. And this is really checking full 3D checking between all those step models that you have for every component in your design in full 3D. No, that's really cool. That's great. Okay, so the next one on the list is dynamic shapes. What have you got for us, John? So dynamic shapes are always on and always dynamic. So from the perspective of, of adding dynamic shapes, one of the capabilities that's always been powerful in ORCAD is the ability to say, for example, I'm gonna add a shape on the top layer. I'm gonna pick this net right there and I'm gonna say it's, it's that net and then just drop in a shape just like that. And you can see immediately that that shape has been drawn in and it's immediately cleared itself around every other trace yeah. that's in the design, right? And then if you were to start doing some add connect in here and start routing through that, right? It immediately plows and heal, all driven from constraints and rules in the design. And so you don't have to ever think like, I've got to turn my shapes on or off to get performance. They're just always on, always dynamic. And then when it comes to the, uh, <clears throat> the shape parameters and attributes, for example, if I were to, let's say, I'm going to select this shape right here, right? In the properties panel, you can now have all the shapes you all the shape controls you need right here at your fingertips. You can set the priority. So if you have multiple shapes on top of each other, you can set the priority. You can say, I want this to be a crosshatch filled shape, or you can say I want it to be a, a diagonal crosshatch filled shape. And you can see that it's it's doing that on the canvas live while you're manipulating these things. So and all these things have parametric entry over here. So these aren't just pretty pictures, these are your controls for the way you want this thing to be filled, right? Mm -hmm. Again, that's kind of that that UI, that self-documenting type of approach that we're going for. Yeah, I like it. You can also specify the corner styles, the gap width, what size of shapes you want to suppress if they're too small. And then you can even specify the thermal settings. So maybe you want to do three-way connect or maybe you want to do diagonal. You can specify it for every pin, surface mount pins, through hole pins, vias, and then you can even add properties like no DRC or wave DRC on certain shapes. So <clears throat> shapes controls are they're also very robust and powerful. So this can be done at a at an individual shape level. You can do this at a global design level if you want. You can do it as a, at a layer level. 
So you have ultimate control over how you want your shapes to be set dynamically with all the thermals and clearances and pouring. Wow. That's really cool. And and <laughs> fast as well. That's uh yeah, that's very impressive. Like yep. it. Great job. Okay, so the next item on the list is live doc. John, tell us all about live doc. What do we need to know? So live doc is another completely from the ground up new solution to create fabrication and assembly drawings from ORCAD X. Okay. So from your ORCAD X layout canvas here, you're going to go under manufacturing, live doc, create new from template. And mm -hmm. that's going to switch you over into this live doc view. The template basically is a way, just like your, your PowerPoint templates or your Word documentation templates, you can set up your own template specifying which artwork views and charts and labels you want on any page across live doc save that as a template and then you can throw any design at that template and it'll automatically generate these templates so hmm. these views right here this is not a picture this is an actually a a live view into the top side of the board this is a live view into the bottom side of the board so for example you could select this top side view here and come to the visibility and you could say i want to see uh i want to see the ground layer on that view mm -hmm. as well or maybe i don't want to see the ground layer so you can control the visibility as for for any of these views and then once you have it into into live doc you can then do your your dimensioning so for example i'm gonna do some uh, linear dimensioning right there i'll do some ordinal dimensions up the side say i want to pop off to the side here right and just mark up march up some ordinal dimensions once you get those dimensions in place, you can select them and say, yeah, I want to see secondary units. And then I can control the text that you see for those dimensions. You can go back to the linear dimensions. You can also turn on your secondary units. <clears throat> so it's a it's a tool that allows you to create as many fabric and assembly drawings as you want. So I've added another page. You could say on this page, I want to see my power layer. <clears throat> I want to see my bottom layer. Mm -hmm. And maybe I want to see a cross section chart right there, right? So just what are any view? And maybe maybe you want to see a stack up table right here. Cool. You can put any view available from the design into this live doc fabrication assembly drawing. All these artwork layers are created on the films that you're producing for your fabricator. So any film you have set up, you'll be able to produce that film and put an image of it over here. Once you have the images in place, you can say, I want to scale that to be 2x, 1x, whatever you want to do. And then once you have this in place, you could save this as a template. And then any other design you want to throw at it will automatically populate all these views. And then it's live in the sense that if you were to come back into here and start moving, let's say, mounting holes around or anything that's been dimensioned, when you come back into Live Doc, all the dimensions would automatically update. All the yep. views are going to update. All the drill charts, all the cross-section charts, all of them are going to update. They're not just pictures. They're just another view of the live database. So normally you'd have to go out into a, um, a separate documentation tool and load in the design data. And if it changes, it, you can reload it in again. But this, this happens on the fly as you change it uh, instantly. Yeah, yeah. All you got to do is switch the tabs. That's really cool. Yeah, that really is cool. I want to see it live, though. I want to see you moving something and it changing in the in the, in the dock. Can you do that? Okay. All right. I can do. I can do that. Okay. So, for example, let's let's grab this mounting hole right here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just move this mounting hole right over here. And you, you recall I added dimensions to that mounting hole. So the mounting hole's moved. I'm gonna go back into Live Doc, and you can see now it's loading all the PCB views. So that mounting hole moved. The dimension lines associated with that mounting hole moved. It moved on that view there. If we go back to this new page where I punched in all those views, that mounting hole has been moved in every single wow. view inside a live doc. Oh, that's that's so cool. That's so quick, instant, beautiful. Really like yep. it. <clears throat> no, great job. And uh, and I know there's there's loads of things like this, and uh, we're just scratching the surface with with the top ten. We're really excited about the uh, the Orcanx platform, and you've done a you've done a great job with it, John. And Thanks. Uh, credit credit to your team. Excellent. Appreciate work. it. Yeah, look forward to hearing all sorts of user feedback and input to make it better. Oh, you'll get it. Yeah, you'll get it. <laughs> Perfect. Right. So the next one we've got on the list is access to XAI. Does this mean we're going full artificial intelligence, John? 
we're, we're working on it. It's a step in that direction. So any designer inside of ORCAD X, if you want to access XAI, you can under the tools menu, launch XAI, and that's going to open up this XAI panel over here. Mm -hmm. And ORCAD X, one of the things about ORCAD X is it's completely cloud connected and cloud enabled. So this is actually a, a web-based interface connecting to the XAI cloud solution here. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to log in using your ORCAD X login. And then when, anytime you want to work with XAI, you would, you would say you have your board in whatever state it's in. You would create a workspace, give it whatever name you want to do, right? And then you would go into that workspace and upload the board to XAI, do some setups, and then do some running. Um, what that effectively looks like is you would set up the design, for example, tell it what layers you want to pour the power and ground nets on. Okay, you have to kind of tell it sometimes because it's an it's an AI engine, but it, it can't read your mind, right? It doesn't know what layer you want to pour ground on, what layer you want to pour power on. Right. And it's going to go off and then run. And then when it's done, you're going to get some results back, letting you know how well it did, how many DRCs it made, how well it did on impedance timing and whatever. And then you can just download the results and see what XAI did for you. And then while XAI is running, you have your full desktop tool available to you to continue to work on that design or any other design. So it doesn't take you away from your desktop tool. It's just kind of like you send it off to an intern to work on for a little bit. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so the next one on the list is DRC browsing. What have you got for us, John? So as a designer, when you have a design that has DRCs, you need to very quickly ascertain how many different types of DRCs you have, what type of DRCs you have, and where they're at in the design. So mm -hmm. we've produced this very slick DRC browser that gives you, at a top glance, how many DRCs you have in the design and what type of DRCs you have. And this is a, a navigatable pie chart. So here it's telling you, you have over 1,400 electrical DRCs. If you descend into that, it's then going to tell you how many different types of electrical you have, certain number of impedance, a certain number of propagation delay, and some return, return path DRCs. So if you really want to focus on where are these return path DRCs, you can click into that. And then now you know you have a few subcategories of return path. And what this DRC browser is doing as you navigate is it's populating this search panel down here that's now becoming a navigator. So you can then start to click through each one of these to find out where that DRC is at in the design, and then what do you want to do with it as a designer? So if this is a DRC, do you need to start working with the design to fix this DRC? Do you need to change your constraints? Or do you want to just go in and wave that DRC and say that DRC is waived for that particular reason or whatever? And then you can go back up to the top level design and you can go back up and start working on different types of DRCs. Now, maybe you want to look at your spacing DRCs and now this is your DRC browser. So it's all the information you need with complete access and control to all of your design tools that you have access to. So you can find the DRC, then go into slide, add connector, add shape and fix the DRC as needed. Wow, John, thanks ever so much. That's 10, 10 top things you can do with ORCAD X in no particular order. And uh, we very much appreciate it. I want, I want more though. You've got to give me a number 11 so I can go back to the team and, and show them one more thing. Have you got We're something to up to 11, huh? Okay. Let's do 11. For manufacturing, right? So you're done with your design. You got to start generating a ton of output. And remember, we already talked about live doc. So what you can do is you can go into this export to manufacturing menu. And this is a one-stop shop form to configure everything you need to suck out of your design database to give to your fabricator. So you have your IPC data, your IPC PDF data, your artwork. How do you want your artwork to be put out? Do you want to have NC drill files, back drill reports, film record PDFs, fabrication bill PDFs, assembly views, right? So this is broken down into fabrication types of exports, assembly types of exports, and then all sorts of different reports that you may want to generate in the design. And then of course you check this box and it's going to go grab a PDF from the live doc that you produced earlier. All of this is, is configurable. So if you were to go in here and set this up once, when you hit export, it's going to save this configuration. So the next time you open this on the next design, all your settings are going to be exactly the same. 
And then when you hit export, it's just going to march through this list top to bottom, pull all this data out of the database and put it into a single zip file so that you can give that to your fabricator. Wow. That is really cool. Like all there in one place. Brilliant. Excellent. Yep. Totally love it.